Hey, howdy, hey, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. For tonight's video, I'm going to be reviewing RuPaul's Drag Race Season 13, Episode 7. So if that sounds good to you, make sure to like this video, comment down below what you thought about this episode, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And without further ado, let's get this video started. <laughs> Hey guys, it is your girl Denali from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 13. Welcome to Samateur Hour. Like and subscribe to this channel. Bye! Alright, alright. So, for today's episode, we are going to be reviewing RuPaul's Drag Race, the Bossy Rossi episode. And this episode starts out with the queens entering back into the workroom after Tamisha was eliminated. Um, and Candy was really shooken up by it because she thought she would be really happy that, um, she's still safe. But she was also really upset to see Tamisha leave. I was really upset to see Tamisha leave too. I love Tamisha. And I think the show was missing something without her, honestly. So, that happened. Uh, nothing else too crazy happened that I really want to talk about. Nothing really crazy. So that ends that day. Then it's a new day in the workroom. And the queens enter into the workroom, and then RuPaul tells them that for their mini challenge, they are going to be doing the reading challenge. Because reading is what? Fundamental. Anyways, so the reading challenge was fun. Um, it did seem a little faster than previous reading challenges. I don't feel like we got to see as many reads as I would have wanted to see, because this is such a crucial part of the um, Drag Race franchise. And I feel like we didn't get as much as we usually get. But it was still really fun. It was a good reading challenge. One of the highlights, for me at least, was when uh, Got Me uh, called Candy a pug. I just thought that was funny. Um, anyways, in the end of the reading challenge, uh, RuPaul announces that Got Me won. And Got Me wins a gift card from Isley NYC. Isley NYC actually made these sunglasses that you've seen me wear so many times. I love them. They make amazing eyeglasses. If you haven't checked them out, go check them out. But, um, congratulations to Got Mick. Way to go. And then RuPaul introduces the main challenge this week. Which is going to be the Bossy Rossi After Dark. Yes, Bossy Rossi is coming back after season 10. And this was a fun one, I will say. It was a really fun improv challenge. I love a good improv moment. And this was no exception. I had a really good time watching it. Anyways, so the RuPaul splits all the... Queens into different groups and tells them what um, scenes they're going to have to do. First, we get Denali, Rosé, and La La Rie. Then we get Gottmik, Olivia, and Utica. And then we get Candy and Simone. And finally, we get Tina with Elliot. Uh, the one thing I really wanted to talk about with this point was when Tina mentioned that she was worried that she from being partnered with Elliot because Elliot has tended to fade into the background and she was worried about that regarding the improv challenge because Tina Burner is a comedy queen ultimately so she was worried that she wouldn't do as well because Elliot, of having Elliot in her group so that's what happens then all the queens read through the scripts and they assign the roles um from there are a few points I wanted to point out one specifically was the Olivia really wanted to get the mime role in their scene. And then Utica also wanted the mime role. And in the end, Olivia ended up getting it and killing it. I love Olivia, and she did so well in this episode. Um, but yeah, that was the one thing I really wanted to point out there. Nothing terribly crazy happened in this part of the episode, in my opinion. Um, it was fine. There was a few moments when Elliot was feeling like Elliot was sort of being left out by the other queens. Um, which is probably how Elliot felt. Um, that's all I'm gonna really say on that. Uh, I obviously wasn't there, so I don't know. Um, but anyways, that happened. And, yeah, now we get into the actual Bossy Rossi episode. This was really fun. I really enjoyed, uh, seeing the Bossy Rossi thing. I love them. Um, some of the highlights, obviously, Olivia's mind was killing it, killing it, killing it. Um, I also really liked Simone and, uh, Candy, I think they played off each other really, really well. And just 
super, super great improv partners. I thought that was really, really good. They really built off each other and really helped each other within the scene. And then we also got to see Denali and Rosé. I think they both did really well as fake being pregnant. It was a bit weird, but it was really fun. Um, Gomic did a really good job, and of course, Olivia, like I said. And Tina did really well, too. I think Tina did a really good job uh, with that giant butt. So funny. So good. And yeah, that was about it. Nothing too crazy happened with the Valsy Rousey part of the episode. It was a fun part. I enjoyed it. Good improv challenge, like I've said. And I think it went well. So, yeah. Now we get into the new day, which is Elimination Day. And the queens are all getting ready to go on the workroom. Work, go on the main stage. Get into their gowns and all the things. Um, there's a one point uh, conversation happens with... Some, where we find out more about Simone and we find out some about Simone's past with her family. And then we also find out about Elliot and Elliot dealing with depression, which I feel like is something that um, a lot of people have been dealing with. A lot of people deal with depression. And I feel like especially during this crazy time that we are in as a world, um, I feel like that has gone to worse for a lot of people. So I feel like this was a very relatable moment for Elliot. Um, so that was nice I guess and yeah and also Tina and Elliot got to bond a little bit over that and yeah so now we get into the runway which is my favorite part of the episode and the runway theme this week was beaded I love a good beaded gown um first I wanted to go over the judging judges judges yes judges um obviously we have RuPaul we got Ross Matthews we got Michelle Visage, and we got T.S. Madison. I love T.S. Madison. T.S. Madison, great judge, great judge, great judge, great judge. I hope she's a regular throughout the season, like uh, Nicole Byer and um, Lonnie Love. We'll see what happens. Anyways, so I wanted to go over the runway, a few of my highlights. I think Denali looked gorgeous. I'm going to go ahead and put a picture over here of her. I also really, really liked Rosé's. And Candy looked stunning, 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 stunning. And also, I think um, Simone, 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 every single week, Simone looks gorgeous. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. And this was an amazing runway. So, yeah, it was a fun runway. Um, I also did find that interesting that Olivia had a similar hairstyle to a hair the hairstyle Candy wore on the ball episode. I don't know if y'all noticed that. I did actually look more into it. Um, and the person who made Olivia's wig was different from the person who made Candy's wig. So my guess is they probably both brought the wig into the competition and didn't know about it. So they were different wigs. I do think R Candy's wig did look a little bit better than Simone, or Olivia's, sorry, Olivia's. Uh, not saying Olivia's was bad by any means. I just think Having seen Candy's before, I think hers was a little bit better. That's my own opinion on that. Anyways, so now we get to the actual judging. And we find out who the safe queens are. The safe queens this week are going to be Gottmik, uh, Tina Burner, Denali, and Rosé. And Denali and Rosé are both shooken up by being safe. They're both so upset, especially Denali, I've noticed. Denali looked gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And I do wish the judges had critiqued her because that gown, so well done, so well shaped. Everything was gorgeous. And yeah. And then the queens who are safe go back into the untucked area. And we get to the actual judging. And we find out who the tops and the bottoms are. The tops this week obviously are going to be Simone, Candy, and Olivia. Because they all look gorgeous and they all did really well in the uh, improv challenge. And the bottoms this week are going to be Elliot, Lala, and Utica. None of these were really surprising to me. They all sort of make sense. And I agree with the judging for the most part. Honestly, I think the judging would, went pretty well this episode. So... Good job with that, I guess. And now the queens go back to untucked and we get into the judging. Um, final judging without the queens, obviously. Nothing too crazy happens there. Um, yeah, that was about it. And then we find out the queens come back onto the work on the main stage and we find out who the winner is this week. And the winner this week is going to be Olivia Lux. 
So Olivia Lux has won two weeks in a row since so congratulations to Olivia. Way to go. Way to really just come in and really show the uh, competition who you are. And I think Olivia's killing it. Olivia's really, really killing it. And she's making herself known. So I love Olivia. Way to go. And uh, Simone and Candy are safe. So that's good. And the bottom two uh, who will have to lip sync are going to be Elliot and Lala, which means Utica is safe. So Elliot and Lala lip sync against each other. Um, this was a fun lip sync. I think they both did really well. And yeah, that was about it. Nothing really crazy happened. In the end, uh, RuPaul tells Elliot to stay and Lala has to sashay away, unfortunately, which means we don't get any more Lala Re. I love Lala Re. So charismatic. So, so, so charismatic. 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 And yeah, no, I think Lala is an amazing queen. And I just don't think um, she was at the level where, as to some of the other queens were in this competition. So ultimately, that's why I think she ended up sashaying away. So that brings me to the end of this review. Again, like I said in all my reviews, do not send hate to any of these queens mentioned in this video because they are not, this is not what the, these videos are meant to be before. Anyways, send them love, do all the good things, make sure to like this video, comment down below, hit that share button, share with your friends, your enemy, enemies, your co-workers, your social media, share all over the place. Let's spread the word of the Samateur Hour. And um, yeah, hit that subscribe button. And I will be back here tomorrow with my fashion review. So definitely tune in for that and I will see you guys later. Bye guys.